What's up, y'all? It's Josh Sportsgate here with my 2023 Kentucky Wildcats season predictions. They brought in Devin Leary at quarterback. That is why the NC State player, that's Devin Leary, is on the uh, thumbnail and is right here. Um, Great player and is going to be the starter, so thought I'd throw him on there. Anyway, here we're going to do a little bit of an off-season review. If you want to uh, skip ahead in the video, um, skip like a couple minutes, I guess, and Go past this part till we get to the schedule. Here is the uh, off-season review. So last year, Kentucky went seven and six with a bowl loss to Iowa. So seven and five in the regular season, and the sports books are predicting Kentucky to uh, win between six and seven games. The over/under is six and a half, so between six and seven games this season. Fifteen players on this team return from last year. Uh, 10 on offense and 5 on defense. Three players were drafted, including Will Levis, who probably could have been a first-round pick, but he was a second-round pick. In terms of uh, recruiting, Kentucky had the 30th, 30th best recruiting class. All these players are, all the uh, recruits are going to be freshmen, including these three four stars: Shamar Porter, wide receiver from Tennessee. He is a top 250 national player and the fourth best player from Tennessee. Grant Godfrey is a linebacker from Georgia and is a top 20, well, almost a, excuse me, almost a top 25 player from Georgia. Uh, I mean, uh, almost a top 25 linebacker. Kamari Anderson is another four star player. He plays tight end and is the second best player from Michigan in this class. Those are the three four stars. There are 16 three stars that go along with this class and a total of seven receivers. Now I think it counts tight ends and receivers as receivers, but seven total players who would catch the ball. Transfer portal. Oh boy, that was really big this offseason for UK. Um, they ranked 14th, which is quite good. They brought in 12 total transfers, 6 4-stars and 6 3-stars. Here are the players, I think, who will make the most difference. And these three players will all be starters. Let's start with Ray Davis. He is a 4-star running back, 4-star transfer um, running back. He is five foot nine, 210 pounds, and he's coming in from Vanderbilt. He was very big in the Vanderbilt offense last year, and he is going to be a starter at Kentucky. Now we have Devin Leary, who is really the big player in the offseason. Um, he is coming in from NC State as a transfer to Kentucky. Another four-star player, four-star recruit out of high school. He was very good. Well, he was pretty good at NC State, and I think he will... Replace um, Will Levis. I think he'll be able to do it. Um, they'll have probably equally as good quarterback play with uh, Leary here. He is a senior. Uh, he might be taking an extra year. Um, this might be his extra year, though. Not sure. Uh, obvious starter. He, I think he might even be a grad transfer. I don't know. I'm rambling. Then we also have J.Q. Hardaway who is coming in from Cincinnati as a four-star cornerback. He is going to be a starter as well. There are three other four-star transfers and six three-star transfers to go along with those players. My personal ratings for this Kentucky team, seven and a half for offense. I might think about bumping that up to an eight. Yeah, I'll bump it up to an eight. Um... I'm giving K Kentucky an 8 as the offensive rating, uh, personal out of 10. I think Leary is going to be good. I think Ray Davis should be good. Then the offensive line is much improved from last season. Um, there is also a senior tight end on the roster and some other young receivers who will be good eventually. Maybe. The defense is a six, only five returning players on that defense. Um, then we, you do have J.Q. Hardaway coming in. Um, 
I don't think it'll be as good as it was last year as they are losing all those players. Um, yeah, yeah. Offense an 8, defense a 6. Also, the defense, or not the defense, excuse me, probably the defense. Um, I know the offense, besides for Devin Leary, is pretty young. Um, mostly juniors and sophomores. So, in upcoming years, uh, I believe on the defense too, juniors and sophomores mostly. But in upcoming years, this Kentucky team should grow and develop a lot. And maybe be a top three team, maybe a top two team in the SEC East. All right, here we are with the schedule. This is the most important part of the uh, the season, the teams you play. Um, we start out with games versus Ball State, Eastern, uh, Kentucky, Akron, and Vandy. Um, those are all not fantastic teams. Then you play Florida and Georgia, pretty good. Um, then you have Missouri in between Georgia and Tennessee. And then you close out the season with Mississippi State, Alabama, South Carolina, and Louisville. Here we go. We will throw these teams up on this chart. We're going to start with Ball State because it's at the beginning of the season. Ball State should be a big win. This is a max school. Um, they're not very good in comparison. Um, same thing with Eastern Kentucky. But Eastern Kentucky is actually FCS, which is not even in the same division. They are not even they're not even in like the top hundred thirty three teams in college football. They're below that somewhere. FCS should be an easy win. Akron is next there, also in the MAC conference. Um Akron's not good. Akron's not good. Um there shouldn't even be a competition. Those should, those three games should all be big wins. And so should Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is on the road. But it should be a big win. Vandy holds a one-game winning streak against Kentucky. I don't think it's going to matter. Um, Kentucky should start 4-0 and with 35, probably 40 points in all four of those games. Next up, we have... Ken not Kentucky. Uh, Florida. Next up, Kentucky plays Florida. I'm um, going to put that in the toss-up category. I don't think Florida's going to be that good this season. Um, go watch my Florida preview. Um, I don't think Florida's going to be that good. It is a home game for Kentucky, but I do feel like this could be a little tricky for the Wildcats. Um, after four easy games, this will this will probably be maybe the biggest game of the season because it will definitely show how the team is going to play against good competition. In week six or game six, whatever it is, um, Kentucky's on the road at Georgia. Good luck. Good luck. Um, heads up, it's not going to happen. Kentucky is going to probably get obliterated by Georgia uh, on the road. That's really all I have to say about that. Big loss for Kentucky. Sorry, you have to play them. After Georgia... KU plays Mizzou. Mizzou, not a great team. Probably one of the top, not top, bottom. Probably one of the bottom three teams in the SEC, uh, along with Vanderbilt. That should be, I'm not going to say it's a big win. I'm not going to say it's a big win, but it. Um, it's not going to be close. Uh, probably... Two touchdowns, maybe 17 points. Um, it's how I favor Kentucky in that game right now in late July. Um, I think uh, Big Blue should win that game. Kentucky's Big Blue, right? Probably. I could totally be getting that wrong. I thought I saw that on their stadium somewhere. Um, anyway, next to Tennessee. Tennessee is probably going to be a close loss. I feel like these schools are rivals. I feel like they're rivals, but probably not. At home for Tennessee, um, probably a loss, honestly. Tennessee shouldn't be much worse than what they were last year with 10 wins. 
So, uh, I think the Vols go into Kroger Field and get a good win. Next up is Mississippi State. Miss State is probably overrated this season. Um, I don't even know if they're going to go to a bowl game. They might be the worst team in the SEC West. On the road, um, RIP Mike Leach. On the road for Kentucky, they're not very. They're not going to be great. Uh, they will have Will Rogers, I think. That's uh, their quarterback. He's been there forever. But I don't think that uh, Miss State's going to win. I think KU should win. Another game could be a little tricky, trippy. Um, I think Kentucky should get a win, probably within 10 points. I think these schools are also like forced rivals because um, they are each other's um, opposite division every year. Every, the, every year these teams play, even though they're in the opposite division. I don't, I, comment down below if you're gonna, if you're a Kentucky fan and how you feel about the uh, Kentucky and Mississippi State game every year. Is that a rivalry? I don't think so. But let me know your opinion because you follow Kentucky. Next up is Alabama. Alabama should be a big, well, I was going to say big loss. It could probably be a close loss. Um, uh, at home, I guess, for Kentucky, well, maybe, um, close loss probably within, like, 15 points. Bama is a extremely young team. Now, just because they're young doesn't mean they have, they don't have talent, but they are very young, the youngest squad in the SEC. Um, Bama should win, though. I don't know if Nick Saban has ever lost to Kentucky. If it hasn't happened, I don't think it's going to happen this year. Um, Bama with a win there. Next up, we have South Carolina, who could easily be the second best team in the SEC East. They could easily be the second best, or they could be the fifth best. This game sort of changes that. Um, Kentucky could win this game. Now, it's not at Kroger Field. You do have to go down to South Carolina and play on the road very difficult environment and South Carolina is not a team you want to, di to disrespect this year probably going to get back to eight wins in Kentucky could be one of those um I could see Kentucky depending on how the season's going uh could see the Wildcats getting a win here but on paper it doesn't feel like a Kentucky win right now finally Game 12, Kentucky plays their rival Louisville on the road. Um, Kentucky, I believe, is on a four, might be five game winning streak against Louisville. And I don't really see that breaking this year. Louisville is not going to be a top team in their conference. They're probably not going to be ranked um, on the road. I guess that matters. But Kentucky should probably get the best of Louisville. In that week it does look I it does look like I forgot to put the projected record up there um, I'll just talk about that for a minute Kentucky should win these top four games 4-0 then beat Mizzou and Louisville for six wins and then they should probably win at least one of these toss-up games for a seventh win and then potentially they could be probably Tennessee or South Carolina. Um, I don't see them losing, see them winning against Alabama. Um, I could see them beating South Carolina. I kind of talked myself into it for an eighth win. Um, I think Kentucky should go eight, eight and four. Eight and four feels pretty good. Um, they went seven and six last year, so eight and four should be good they're improving um definitely on offense not so much on defense but they'll get there eventually not sure if i mentioned it at the beginning but they do play the two best teams probably three probably the three best teams in the sec three of the best at least uh in the sec so that definitely helps out their schedule with difficulty definitely getting an a 
it would probably be an A plus if they didn't schedule Ball State, Eastern Kentucky, and Akron. Um, if they scheduled like a Sun Belt team or a Mountain West team or even a bad Power Five team, I could probably see them getting an A plus schedule difficulty. But it's not super important. You kind of need to lock up those early season wins when you have a very backloaded schedule like Kentucky does here in the SEC. That's pretty much all I have to ramble about today. There you have my Kentucky predictions. Um, I think it does say Big Blue over here on that wall. Not the point. Devin Leary, starting quarterback. That's the biggest move. Probably one of the biggest transfer moves in the SEC. Um, let me know if you're a Kentucky fan. What do you think about this season? Thank you so much for watching, and until the next one, peace.